In the 17 days after the evacuation, many people who were not involved in the initial evacuation, but who participated in the April 14th pet rescue, or came to daily briefings with hundreds of evacuees in their still toxic clothes, became exposed and ill for the first time. Within just a few days of the spill, um, local health officials made the decision to allow people back in to feed and water pets and livestock without having any information and any data on what chemical interactions had occurred between the chlorine and the potassium crustalate or any of the other chemicals there. Um, there had only been chlorine monitoring done at that point in certain areas around the site. Um, and the decision was made to allow people back in, and the people were not fully informed of potential risks and trusted the local health officials um, in that decision that everything was safe. So people, people returned into the evacuated zone um, secure and, and confident in the fact that it was safe to go because they had heard that from the incident command team and the local health officials wearing no protective gear, not, to my knowledge, not even having been offered that as a choice. Um, and not even having enough information to ask the right questions, which would have led them to make that choice. So in hindsight, it seems like a very, very misinformed and dangerous decision, which had lasting implications for many people. You were exposed more than I was, too, though, because you came back to pick up the school animals on the pet feeding day on Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're around here all day on that bus. We've had the pet retrieval day. And I basically spent a good part of the day driving around. They stopped us at bridge where they were waiting for instructions and monitoring. They were had the chlorine tester in the bus. And I came down to the house and, and went back. And I really think they say there was no notice, no monitoring chlorine. But I really felt like I'd been affected tingly, you know, just not. It, kind of knocked me for a loop there for a while right after that and during it. Tokers that live the house right up in here, they said when they went into their house and their shop, it was really strong chlorine smell in their garage, their outbuilding, and in the house. And they asked the guy that was monitoring the chlorine on the bus, well, come on in. Could you come in and take a monitoring in our, in our outbuilding here? It's really, really strong. And the guy didn't do it. He wouldn't get off the bus and do it. What the hell? Breathing tuck it, it's like breathing through a clogged up straw, sort of. And more like trying to eat really thick jello through a clogged up straw. I have to use this. I have to press this button, sprays in my mouth. And I have to put this one up my nose. Everyone runs up the stairs and our school walks up for me and we're laughing in our class almost all the time. And sometimes I'm late for school because I can't ride my bike that fast. And if I do, when I get to school, I'm having breathing problems and stuff. And, um, when I got home that evening, I got a call from Jim Carlson of the um, Missoula City County Health Department, and he said, we've had a bad chlorine accident out at Alberton. Some of the people are complaining about a pesticide-like odor. He said, do you think that there's uh, some possibility that the chlorine could react with something from another car to make pesticide-like uh, odors that, that people would be reporting? He said there was another tanker that, that had been ruptured in the area that had potassium cresolate, and did I think there was a possibility for reaction. And I, I uh, considered that for a moment, and I said, yes, it looks to me like uh, there could be a reaction. Uh, the potassium cresolate is a, a sort of material that can react with chlorine. I said I wanted to check with a couple of my organic colleagues just to, to confirm my feelings. Uh, but that I would be right back to, to him. And when I talked to them, one of them said, well, unless the chlorine was directly injected, I don't see it reacting. And the other one said, oh, I think there would be reactions. And knowing the, the scenario of the spill, looks like the chlorine was directly injected. So, so both of them uh, sort of confirmed my uh, suspicions. Workers cleaning the site will be wearing protective clothing, including dermal and respiratory protection. 
it is unlikely that a hazmat worker wearing protective clothing will encounter sufficient concentrations of chlorophenols to cause symptoms. I haven't done extensive research uh, on the accident. I, I mostly was just involved in that, that early uh, analysis and helping decide on criteria for when it would be safe for people to go back. Uh, we helped, I helped develop a set of, of questions that had to be answered before they could go back in. So from what I was told and what I um, learned by uh, looking at, at MSDS sheets is that the uh, potassium cresylate had been used to uh, help remove some sulfur uh, from other fuels uh, so that uh, other fuels would have passed through the, the tank car. From my analysis, I can see in the tank car significant amounts of phenol, which is related to but much different from Cresol, and it was in a concentration almost as, as high. On April 27, evacuees were allowed to return to their homes. At this point, the EPA and Missoula County stepped down from their positions. The state of emergency was lifted, and the Montana State Department of Environmental Quality and Mineral County Health Department, with its one staff member, were left in charge. Despite the recommendations of toxicologists to remove the contaminated soil from Alberton before allowing evacuees to return, the soil remained in boxcars there until weeks after evacuees returned. It then moved on to these other locations. And when the train came down the tracks with the not supposed to be hot soil, this was supposed to be the soil that was very credibly able to be transported out of the area without hurting anybody, um, it was like somebody punched me in the face. And my son was in the living room and um, he was, I could hear him screaming because, and when I got in the house, he was holding his hands over his ears, I'll never forget this, holding his hands over his ear like this, and the kid was screaming. And it's like, my ears, my eyes, and he couldn't breathe. He went into an asthma attack right away. And we left, of course, but I looked at the train, I can see the train from here, and the cars were supposed to be covered. The cars were not covered tight tarp down the cars had a tarp over them and some miscellaneous stuff on top to hold the tarp but the tarp edges were billowing in the wind so we're talking g4 soil blowing out all over the ground and i'd already cleaned my house i'd already washed everything from soup to nuts in this house um i'd clean carpets and everything and of course we had to evacuate again and we went back to the hotel, and um, when I came back the next time to clean the house, Justin couldn't even come down the hill all the way. He, and within an hour of leaving the Missoula area, his peak flow went up. I mean, a major roll amount. I, it seems to me it was like 50 to 60 points on the peak flow meter. His breathing capacity increased. and. He couldn't come in the house, so I ended up having to rip out all the carpeting. Of course, Rail Link wasn't going to send somebody out here to expose them to whatever they contaminated my house with. I had to pull the carpeting out, and by the time I got done, I was sick. Plum Creek Lumber Company relocated logging crews on May 9, 1996, after they complained that the smells emanating from the derailment site were affecting loggers in the area. Montana Department of Environmental Quality. Tom Ellerhoff wrote. The DEQ supports Plum Creek's decision and believes temporary relocation would be in the best interest for all concerned. Dated May 9, 1996, less than 13 days after the spill victims were allowed home. This was the work crew. Right, yeah. relocating logging crews while cleanup occurs at the Alberton derailment site. Um, and when uh, I was uh, somewhere in the great stack uh, is some correspondence regarding that and when uh, when the crews uh, uh, indicated that they were having headaches we said our recommendation is get out of there 
And I believe that they then uh, conferred with the responsible party, and, and I think they came to some sort of arrangement. And I'm not exactly sure. Uh, are you folks going to interview Rail Link, too?